Yep, I got one of these. It's a Icon. I don't know. Has it got a name? Just drop point knife with ceramic bearings. Yeah, let's get it out of this package. I'm not one to talk up a box, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, it's about the knife. It's not about the box. Don't really care. <clears throat> there is some kind of, I don't know, man. Some kind of drama surrounding this knife. But I did hear about it. I thought, man, I go to Harbor Freight fairly regularly. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to give me one. And uh, see what see what all the fuss is about. I mean, on the surface of it, looks like G10 carbon fiber. It says it's got D2 steel, and uh, you know that D2 lately. I'm just. I'm liking it more and more and more. My ability to sharpen it and um, get rid of that box. We're going to get rid of this too. It's got a big, thick piece of foam. Yeah, it's kind of cool. All right. So much for boxes and stuff. All right, let's get rid of this. Trusty little box opener, six leaf. Okay. Hmm. Okay. I mean, that's like a legit carbon fiber inlay in that G10. I don't know what that is. Surely that's steel. Yeah. Yeah, all the hardware, the pivots, everything on here is steel. What about that collar? I mean, the collar, maybe not. Collar, maybe anodized aluminum. Could be titanium, I guess. Hmm. Only got one way in. It's just back flipper. I mean, on the surface, the action's pretty, pretty good, man. A little bit of coaxing. Blade looks pretty, pretty good. Center. Icon D2 steel, and on this side it says IK23. Is that the model number? Um, let's see if I can see that anywhere on this box, just to try to get a reference, because this is KDP3 right here. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not seeing that IK23 anywhere. So, I'm not sure what that designates. Doesn't really give me that info. Alright, enough uh, fiddle-faddling around. Let's uh, get in it. Missing my screwdriver. What's up? Oh, I know where it's at. I was messing around at my other bench. Ooh, what's up with that? That's the only way out. I mean, that does not want to come free. That is... It's either peened in there or loctited in a fashion that says it's never going to come apart. I mean, that's everything I got. <laughs> I can't. That's not wanting to come loose. 
let's uh let's try this dude is that a t8 yeah that's a t8 make sure i got a good bite i do oh yeah i mean i'm not one to just give up and be defeated right just because it acts like it doesn't want to let me in there well, what's that got to do with me? I don't care. Yeah, it's just Loctite. It's got a fair piece on it. It's got enough that I probably won't have to put any more on it. Wonder about these side screws. They're T6s. It'd be interesting to see if they're locked. They are not. Or at least that one wasn't. What about this one? Hmm, maybe some Loctite on that one? Had a little, yeah, it's got Loctite. I'm going to guess this one did too. It just didn't, on these little screws, sometimes they can be loctited and they didn't get enough pressure and so they didn't set up. I think it'll come apart now. I mean, I say that, but hmm, I'm going to get that clip off and look for screws underneath there. There might be screws under the scale. Nice profile on the pocket clip. I mean, it's recessed into that G10. It looks like caught part of the carbon fiber, but it's not a round profile at all. It's got straight lines, and so that and one screw, I mean, I wish it had two, but that and one screw, chances are it's going to hold tight. Um, here we go. Whoop. Yeah, no other screws. Not a lot of lube on the bearings, but it's got some random oil just kind of floating around on the knife. I mean, you know. It's not horrible in here for a very inexpensive, pretty dirty, come on, yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty dirty. I think it represents a dirty because they greased the knife, they didn't oil it, which is weird because it was completely coated in oil. I mean, so here you go. It's got internal stop pins. It's pretty cool. It's got, uh, it says ceramic bearings, and that's what it's got. It's got ceramic bearings here. It's got steel liners. Definitely lightweight steel liners. These are not, they are not heavy duty in any way. They are very light. But that's okay. I think, I mean, I think I'd rather have the knife lighter than have some big, massive, eighth-inch thick, heavy um, liners in here. Just need something to provide back rigidity and mounting points for all the hardware, right? I mean, clearly it's not a heavy-use knife, so you don't need... Uh, Got to, it's not got to withstand chopping firewood in the tundra. Yeah, straight up G10 and carbon fiber inlay. Hmm, okay. Pretty cool, man. And the price is right. I'll get to that here in a minute. We're almost ready. Put it back together. Got it cleaned up. Put a little lube on it. I mean, here, here's the thing about this knife. It's not often that you can pick up a decent knife at a local retailer. It's just not often. Like, you know, Walmart used to have a few selections that, you know... I'm going to say that that's anodized. 
well, definitely it's it's anodized, but it's titanium or aluminum one. Yeah, I'm gonna say titanium, anodized titanium. Maybe it's aluminum. I don't know. Those collars. I like how that fit in there. That's pretty cool. But uh, as I was saying, you used to be able to. You know, Walmart would have a, a decent knife once in a while. I actually was in Walmart just recently with my daughter. And uh, I said, hey, hold on before we go. And I rolled over to their to their knife case. And uh, I Gerber's, Bucks, uh, Camelus. Um, I'm trying to think. There was a couple of others in there. Um, their new line, they have a new line. It's definitely a budget knife, but they had. There was a couple of models that looked kind of interesting. I mean, I ain't gonna lie. There was a couple in there, uh, not enough so that I was gonna make my daughter wait on me to find somebody, open up the case, let me check it out, decide if I wanted it or not. You know, I wasn't gonna put her through all that. It's like car shopping, you know, my wife, my wife, my family's not interested in that with me ever. It's like, please don't make me, don't stop there. So I take my time, man. I'm not in a hurry. I want to look. I want to check it out. I want to negotiate. That captured pin. There, I got it. Okay. I mean, it came apart easy. I say easy, that screw. Ooh. I mean, that screw was, without a doubt, one of the tightest pivot screws I've ever opened. Ever. Yeah, it was, it was a beast. Let me check this before I go any further. Oh, that action's going to be sick. I mean, if you have one of these and you didn't take it apart and clean it up, whew, wait till you watch how this thing runs. I can already feel it. And, I, you know, listen, there's a difference between, like, a cheap gas station knife and a, and a, a inexpensive but quality built knife. And I can tell you that getting in this and now taking it apart and putting it together again, this is definitely not cheap gas station stuff. It's just not. I wonder what this is made out of. That's titanium too, isn't it? Nope, that's steel. Okay. Did a good job of coating it and making it look like titanium though. Got the look got the look down. But I, there's a just, man, there's something about a, a fairly quality production knife that the fit, the finish, how the knife goes together, comes apart and goes together. And uh, I can tell you out of the few uh, knives that I've taken apart <laughs> in my collecting days. Yeah, it's been a few. Uh, this has got nice stuff. It's been, it's been manufactured well. The materials are nice. The, the G10, the carbon fiber, the blade steel, the bearings, the liners. This pocket clip, all of it. Um, yeah, come on, man. It it was dirty in there, and without a doubt, it was affecting the action. And now that I have remedied that, this thing, oh, it's gonna run good. Can't say I'm a huge fan of the big badging. I mean, honestly, looking at that, that's kind of a kind of cold steel -esque. you know it's I don't know it's not necessary man like your knives are iconic enough that people can tell now this is an icon mm. knife <laughs> no jimping on this flipper I mean the action on this thing now so nice that I have to check for play. Yeah, there's none. 
Yeah, I mean, the action on this, I'm going to give it an A. I'm not sure if I can fail it. Let me try to fail it, and then I'll grade it. Yeah, there's no way. It's got a great little break on that detent. Um, the access to the locks got some pretty good jimping here. And, uh, and it's definitely scalloped lower on this side. This is ri this is actually, uh, raised up in between the scales. You can see it on both sides. And so accessing that lock is very intuitive. And the action on this thing is wonderful. It's got great action. Up and down. I like it. Ergonomics. So it's got a nice platform for the thumb and a thumb forward strong grip. This uh, finger guard that's created by the flipper tab. There's no jimping on it. There's a little bit of jimping here on the on the lock bar, uh, the liner lock. But this is so tall that definitely locked in behind it. And uh, the pocket clip assists as well. The way that it's curved, it curves and locks in to my hand right there. I can feel that up in there kind of locking, locking me down uh, with that clip as well in a strong grip. Not a weak, you know, not a weak grip, but a strong grip that pocket clips coming into play. So, uh, not so confident, confident, very confident. It's definitely a confident grip. No, no question. Definitely a confident grip. Um, yeah, there's no, there's no, uh, no backwards grip on that. Yeah, I like it. Uh, let's check that pocket clip. It's got good ergonomics, man. It's comfortable in the hand. I didn't feel any hot spots in there. I would say that it uh, it definitely is going to be ergonomically friendly for a smaller hand. So that is one thing. The way that this tapers, I am finding that my my definitely my pinky finger feels like it's when on a strong grip. I'm forcing it off the knife. Um, it's got a lanyard hole too. It's got a big lanyard hole that runs through there to attach a lanyard to this. Um, pot clip. Ooh, that action. So it definitely clears the big stuff on the front side and it runs all the way deep, but it's at an angle. So I didn't see that at first, but the way that the clip is made, see it's it's higher on this side than this side. See, that's way down there, and then it's way up here. So it, it runs at an angle. It's actually meant to, yeah, there, like so, kind of ride like that. So I'm not sure, like, does that put it at the front of the pocket? Like so? I mean, I don't, I guess. I mean, I guess you could put it wherever you want it, but it's got a great grip. It's definitely one hand in, one hand out. Yeah, and it's and it's grippy. It's biting on. Let's try the jean size material. Yeah, I mean, it's it's got a good grip. One hand in, one hand out. My favorite spot back here. Um, I mean, it definitely goes in, but what I'm noticing is with that angle, by the nature of that, it's going to force the knife... Like this makes the pocket flat on that clip. So it, I mean, obviously you don't want to carry the knife like this. Um, yeah, better plug in. Sorry. Yeah. My uh, battery was uh, about to say goodbye. But we're in good shape. I caught it. Yeah, so I, that's kind of an odd duck. I'm not sure about that. If it was on the other side, I think it might be more appropriate. Let's see. 
I mean, not really. I just don't think, I think it's just something you discount. It doesn't have to, the, the pocket material doesn't have to ride flat on that. You just put it where you put it. And I think that, like right there. So it's got a fairly good profile. Definitely an inch is sticking out of there. Uh, but it does work in all three places very well. So let's check it for safety. So. Yeah, there's no contacting that blade on the back. There's no catching that tip. So the clip passes, the tip passes, and the backspacer is protected. It's actually, they raised up on this back to make that good. So, yeah. And the action, man, it's good. Good. Let's check and see how sharp this thing is. I mean, good job. I dig it. Yeah, it's crazy wicked sharp. Super sharp. Um, great for slicing. Yeah, I mean, this thing is super duper sharp, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, price and availability. So, I think I mentioned it on the onset, definitely be in the notes, but this Icon brand is an in-house Harbor Freight brand. And so, Harbor Freight has some purchase plans that, like a membership thing that you can join, and, uh, I, you know, I think typically you can get 10 to 15% off their already discounted prices. Um, I think retail on this knife is like 39 bucks. So, I mean, you know, 10 or 15% off is going to put you, you know, low 30s. D2 steel, G10, carbon fiber. You know, it's got a good grip, uh, confident in the hand you can also choke up here and that's pretty comfortable you know for whatever that is so yeah i mean i guess i guess i get the hype i mean i saw it kind of bouncing around there's some controversy swirling around with it man i don't know what any of that is i don't keep up uh but it's the icon drop point knife with ceramic bearings from harbor freight i don't know if you can order it online um, I can tell you that the store that I've frequent had one and they were telling me stories that as soon as it came in, there was dudes waiting for it, like wanting it. And I just happened to get there after the truck did and they go, you know what? I have one. And so they went in the back and they got it and they put it up front for me. They held it pretty good dudes. I mean, you know, I always find Harbor Freight to be pretty helpful. So, anyways, the Icon Knife from Harbor Freight, 30, 30-ish dollars, and uh, pretty solid. D2, G10, carbon fiber. I dig it. Not a bad knife, man. All right. Hey, listen, appreciate you watching.